This video will review solving triangles using trigonometry. For example, here's a triangle where we know the angle 40 degrees. We actually know another angle here. This indicates a right angle, so that's 90 degrees. And actually now we know all three angles because the interior ang angles of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees, so we could use that to, ter to determine that this angle is 50 degrees. Uh, however, I'm not going to use either of those. I just want to illustrate the following technique for finding the side of a right triangle when you know an interior angle and the length of the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the long side here that's opposite the right angle. So in order to answer this we're going to use these definitions of the trigonometric functions sine, cosine, and tangent. The idea is we're going to identify starting with the known angle we're going to identify the sides of the triangle as being either adjacent, which means next to the angle, that would be this side, or opposite the angle, meaning on the other side of the triangle. So this is the opposite side. And then the long side here, opposite the right angle, as we said before, is the hypotenuse. Based on that, we can figure out from the information we have which of these relationships is available to us in order to evaluate the corresponding trigonometric function. So we can see here that we don't know the adjacent side, but we do know the opposite, or we do know the hypotenuse, and we want to find the opposite side. So using the opposite and the hypotenuse, that corresponds to the sine function. The opposite is represented by x. The hypotenuse has a length of 12. And that's equal to the sine of our known angle. So sine of 40 degrees. Based on that, we can figure out the unknown side x. If we multiply both sides of this equation by 12, we get x is 12 times sine of 40 degrees. And that's the exact value of x. That's the exact length of this side. Uh, sine of 40 can't be simplified to an exact value any better than that. Um, on the other hand, for some applications, a lot of times we will be interested in a decimal approximation. And so if I type 12 times sine of 40 degrees into a calculator, I end up with the approximation 7.71. So this is a length, it's the length of the unknown side indicated by the variable x. This is the length of that side and remember that the 7.71 is just an approximation. To express the exact answer we would use 12 times sine of 40 degrees and just leave it in that form. Okay, next find the length of the side x again. Uh, now here our known angle in this right triangle is 30 degrees. Uh, x this time is the hypotenuse and the other side we know is adjacent to the 30 degree angle. So that means we want to use adjacent and hypotenuse is the cosine function. So if I write adjacent over hypotenuse that'll be 18 over x that should be equal to the cosine of this angle 30 degrees. Okay now to isolate x uh, what I can do is take a reciprocal of both sides so let's write this up here x over 18 equals 1 over 
cosine of 30 degrees. Now you might also remember that when you take the reciprocal of cosine, that's actually the secant function. So I could write the right side of this equation as secant of 30 degrees instead of 1 over cosine of 30 degrees. But we don't have to do that. Um, and typically if we're evaluating things on a calculator, we don't have a secant button most of the time. We'd have to leave things expressed in terms of cosine in order to use a calculator to get a decimal approximation. Okay, so if I finish isolating x by multiplying both sides by 18, I get 18 over the cosine of 30 degrees. And this is an exact answer, although it turns out that it can be simplified because 30 is a common angle. If you've memorized the unit circle, you'll remember 30 degrees is one of the common angles. And the cosine of 30 degrees is 1 half. So this is 18 divided by 1 half. Uh, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by a reciprocal. So this is the same as 18 times 2, which is 36. And so this is the exact answer, which is great. We don't even need a decimal approximation. So be on the lookout for exact angles, like uh, multiples of 30 degrees and multiples of 45 degrees. OK, another one, find the length of the unknown side x. Um, let's label the sides from our known angle. The 18 is adjacent, and the x is opposite. So if we look that up, adjacent and opposite can be used in combination with the tangent function. So I can write opposite over adjacent x over 18, and that's the tangent of the 30 degree angle. So again, 30 is a common angle. It's common for evaluating sine, cosine, or tangent. And it turns out that the tangent of 30 degrees is 1 over the square root of 3, which means to isolate x here, uh, I can just use the far left and the far right sides of this equation, multiply both sides by 18, and I get x is 18 over the square root of 3. Uh, although you might want to simplify that, uh, this can also be written as 6 times the square root of 3. Let's do another. Find the length of the side. Uh, our known angle in this right triangle is 20 degrees. X is adjacent to that. Uh, 5 is opposite that. So again, we're looking at adjacent and opposite, so we'll be using a tangent function. If I write opposite over adjacent, that's 5 over x equals tangent of the angle. 20 degrees. Now 20 degrees is not a common angle, so I'm not going to be able to simplify that right now. Uh, I can come up with an exact answer in terms of the tangent of 20 degrees, uh, which I'll do, and then I can also give a decimal approximation for the final answer. But let's not use a decimal approximation yet. Let's save that for our final answer. Uh, so to get x by itself, I can take a reciprocal of both sides again. So x over 5 equals 1 over the tangent of 20 degrees. Quick reminder that 1 over tangent is the same as cotangent, so we could write this as x over 5 equals cotangent of 20 degrees, but we're going to leave it as 1 over tangent so that we can use our calculator. Uh, isolate x by multiplying both sides by 5. I get x is 5 over the tangent of 20 degrees. That's going to be an exact answer which you can write in that form, or you can write using the cotangent function. Um, but what we're actually going to want to do is get, uh, get an, a decimal approximation by plugging that into a calculator all at once. And doing so gives us the approximation 13.74.
Okay, in all of the examples we've looked at so far, everything was a right triangle, meaning one of the interior angles was 90 degrees. But that's not the case for every triangle. Can we do anything with a triangle that doesn't have a right angle? The answer is yes. Um, so one thing we can do is to use what's called the law of cosines. Uh, this is a relationship between the sides of the triangle. And you might notice this first part looks a little bit like the Pythagorean theorem. In fact, it would be the Pythagorean theorem, except that the Pythagorean theorem only applies to right triangles. And if it's not a right triangle, then you need to correct the Pythagorean theorem with the rest of this expression by including this other term. So what is the rest of it? Uh, a and B are the side lengths here, and capital C is the angle opposite the side whose length is indicated by lowercase c. Okay, so lowercase c is the side length, capital C is the angle opposite that. So if you can get your hands on that information, say if you're trying to find C, uh, the side C, you can get your hands on the angle C and then the sides A and B, you can use the law of cosines. Another option, if you've got some other interior angles, is to use what's called the law of sines. And this is a relationship that says if I take the sine of a side, uh, of an angle, and divide it by the length of the opposite side. I'm going to get the same thing no matter which angle and corresponding opposite side I choose in the same triangle. So let's look at examples where we can use these. Here I have an unknown side, two known sides, and a known angle. My known angle is opposite my unknown side. Well that's exactly what we were describing on the previous slide with the law of cosines. So the law of cosines said c squared is a squared plus b squared. So far it looks like the Pythagorean uh, theorem, but then we have to correct it minus 2ab times the cosine of the angle opposite the unknown side lowercase c. So let's plug these values in. Um, so my unknown side is x. A and b can represent either of the two known sides here. So I'm going to let a be 5. So this is 5 squared. b is 6. So that's 6 squared minus 2 times 5 times 6 times the cosine of 20 degrees. Okay, so let's simplify this. Uh, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 times 6 is 60, so minus 60 cosine of 20 degrees. Uh, this is the same as 61 minus 60 times the cosine of 20 degrees. Now that's all I can really do to simplify the right side because there are no more like terms to combine, uh, no more exponents to simplify. Um, now I want to find x. I, I've got x squared here so I can isolate x by taking a square root of both sides since we know x has to be positive. Um, there are you know, two numbers that satisfy this but only one of them is positive and that's the square root of 61 minus 60 cosine of 20 degrees. And that would be an exact answer. You probably can't do anything really to simplify it, but you could give a decimal approximation by punching this into a calculator. And when I do, I end up with 2.15. Here's another one. Um, this time, a slightly different setup. I have one known side length, not two. 
I have two known angles and one of those known angles is opposite the unknown side length. So because I've got some known angles, uh, one of them's opposite the unknown side length, um, I can maybe use the law of sines for this problem. And I said I have two known angles, but remember I actually have three known angles. As soon as I know two of the angles, I know all of the angles because the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. Uh, so since these add up to 110 degrees, the other side better be 70 degrees. So I have all three known angles, and so that means I'm definitely going to be able to use the law of sines in order to come up with the relationship between the side lengths. So remember, the law of sines says if I take any one of these angles, take the sine of it, and divide that by the side length that's opposite, I'll get a value, and that value will be the same no matter which pair of angle and opposite side length I use. So for example, if I use the known side 6 and the opposite angle 70 degrees, I can write sine of 70 degrees over 6. That's a number. But if I were to use this pair instead, 60 degrees, so take the sine of that, and divide by the opposite side length x, that's a number, and these two numbers will be the same for this triangle. So that's an equation I can use to isolate x. So I'll do that again by taking reciprocals. So on the left side, I get 6 over sine of 70 degrees. On the right, I get x over sine of 60 degrees. And then to isolate x, I would multiply both sides by sine of 60 degrees. If I do that, I'll end up with x is equal to 6 times the sine of 60 degrees divided by the sine of 70 degrees. That's an exact answer. And a decimal approximation, if you punch that all into a calculator, I come up with 5.53.